Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm officially 16 weeks, almost 17 weeks pregnant and a lot of like my meals and meal timing and what I'm eating have completely changed. So today I'm going to be sharing a really realistic what I eat in a day while pregnant. So we'll go right into it. But actually I just realized before that, maybe like a little belly bump update. One thing I was really surprised to learn about when I first met with my midwife, I was like, oh, I'm like, six weeks pregnant, when should I start showing? And they're like, probably not until like week 20. <laughs> So it kind of just looks like I'm bloated. <laughs> but I have a feeling probably the next couple weeks things will really start to pick up because even this like belly bloat look is a new thing before I didn't even have that. Probably popping pretty soon. <laughs> So I just got out of the shower. The first thing that I do, um, I've been drinking a lot of water lately, like way more thirsty. So to help balance that out, I've been having, I've been having um, a big pinch of sea salt actually like throughout the day, but definitely right after my workout, make sure my electrolyte levels are balanced. Um, I do also have an element. Yesterday I had one in addition to the additional salt. So I'm just gonna start off with some plain old salt. For my first meal, which it is 8 or 2 a.m. right now, so I'll be eating it in like 15 or so minutes. Um, for my first meal, I'm going to be making like a cottage cheese pancake. Yesterday, it turned into more like a cottage cheese scramble probably because of human error on my part. But I've been really liking it because it's really high in protein and especially during pregnancy, it's so important to be getting so much protein. Actually, my midwife wants me to be getting like between 80 to 100 grams from complete sources, which was already pretty easy. I was already doing that. So I'm gonna be making this. We have it made from just regular whole milk cottage cheese. About a half cup of that for 14 grams. Okay. Now it's only focusing on you. <laughs> and then I'm adding in two eggs, um, fresh from our chickens outside. So I'm getting a ton of choline, which is also really important for pregnancy and brain development for a baby. Um, some coconut flour, but it's going to be really high in protein, high quality source of fat, help stabilize my blood sugar levels and make sure I'm getting what my body needs for my first meal. This recipe is actually from my six week summer meal plan from 2021. So I'm going to be following that. Normally it looks like this, but I had a bit of user error yesterday. So hopefully it'll actually turn out looking like real pancakes. Let's make it. is ready to go. So it's actually, cause I got a little distracted. I paused cooking for a little bit, was doing stuff and then I came back. So it's 8.46 right now. I finished eating last night around like 6.30 maybe seven. So I am still getting about like a 13 daily hour fast, but I'm not purposely intermittent fasting right now. I do miss it because I definitely feel so much better. My GI tract feels so much better when I have a more like strategic intermittent fast that I'm following. But like, I also am just getting hungry earlier. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting everything my body needs right now and eating when I'm actually hungry. Actually, I should probably show you this. Not all meals are beautiful, <laughs> but this tastes so good. And you don't even need to add anything on it. Sometimes I will put like some heavy cream, the homemade zero sugar whipped cream, very low in sugar, great way to start the day. Anyway, so now that I'm in second trimester, I've definitely been noticing I get a lot more DOMS, the delayed onset muscle soreness after my workouts. So I'm following more pregnancy specific, pelvic floor specific, workouts right now and that's what i did this morning actually yesterday's was more of like a true workout today's was more stretching focused i got a few a bit of footage here where it's just focused on opening up making sure that i'm 
remaining flexible during this time and really preparing my body for labor. That actually has been really helpful. I've been following a specific program and I'll have that link down description below if you guys are like pregnant and looking to follow like a specific program. It's great to have those like recovery days in between each workout. I'm having about like three days of true either like strength training or like Pilates style training. And then two to three days of more of the mobility stretching opening things. <laughs> One thing you probably noticed is I'm not having coffee right now honestly it's nothing to do with the pregnancy other than the fact that like during first trimester i could not drink it because it was making me so actually it wasn't making me queasy but it just was one of those foods that like i couldn't even look at i couldn't smell i had nausea pretty bad and coffee was one like I couldn't even be around Trevor when he was drinking coffee. So I've kind of gotten out of the habit, but I do still have like the occasional decaf coffee, but mostly just sticking with water right now. Let's get into supplements. Cause this is when I take all my supplements. So one big one is iodine. I'm actually about to just put that in my water. So I just put like one to two drops of iodine in my water just to support my thyroid health right now, which is really important when pregnant. And that's it. That's all I'm using. <laughs> the other ones I'm taking are my prenatals. These are the ones I switched back to now that I'm not queasy and I can actually handle them. Although I kind of hate them because look at these horse pills. They are just like swallowing cockroaches. In my first trimester, I was doing the gummy supplements with the Smarty Pants brand. I was using those because I literally like could not do capsules when I was feeling really queasy. So I didn't love having the six grams of added sugar, but it was important to make sure I also <coughs> ate. This one's actually a bit more controversial and it's fish oil. So I've been taking about a teaspoon of cod liver oil to make sure I'm getting my DHA. And a lot of people get like a little bit freaked out about vitamin A because they think it can cause toxic levels, but that's actually been found more so with the synthetic form, not with the food-based form. So I'm not concerned about this. This is what I'm personally using. Of course, talk to your midwife, doctor, et cetera. If you're pregnant on what you should be doing, but I'm taking a teaspoon because I wanna make sure I'm actually getting all the DHA I need, which is so important <laughs> for baby's brain health. I usually go on like a 10 minute walk around like 11 o'clock. I think it's like 11.30 right now. Just gonna get some steps in, break up the day, get some movement in. Come on, girl. Okay, it's about 12.15, so I figured it's a good time to start making my lunch. I'm actually like starting to get pretty hungry right now. Since I'm breaking my fast earlier, I'm tending to start to get hungry around noon. So I'm going to make some scrambled eggs. I'm only going to use two right now because I am also going to be having like another little mini meal um, around probably 2.30 or three-ish. I'm going to make some scrambled eggs with some milk, some sauerkraut, which is so good. So good for gut health, which I need it right now. <laughs> Pregnancy is not good on gut health, but I'm also going to have along with it, this kettle on fire broccoli cheddar soup. So I've been trying to make sure I get in some amount of bone broth every single day, whether it be like mixed into my meal somehow. Like last night I had a pumpkin spaghetti squash pasta and I use kettle on fire bone broth um, within the sauce. But kettle on fire also has these really convenient soups. And as you can tell, I'm like bundled up right now because it is so cold in our house. Soup going along with my eggs will be Perfect. But especially while pregnant, I've been really focusing on getting daily glycine, which does become conditionally essential during pregnancy. Also really important for detox pathways. So it's been really useful that I have all these kettle fire soups that I can add into my meals or alongside my meals and then have just really handy pre-made bone broth, some kettle fire bone broth to just naturally package and sneak more collagen, more glycine into my meals as well. And I particularly love kettle fire and I've been working with them for a really long time because their product is so high quality. They slowly simmer the bones that they use within their bone broth. That means that you're actually getting so much collagen bang for your buck from the bone broth that you're getting. They also use bones from grass fed cows. Plus Kettle Fire is just really convenient. So if you don't have time to like slowly simmer some bone broth for 24 hours, having something like Kettle Fire bone broth or their soups in your pantry is such a lifesaver, especially if you're trying to have like daily bone broth the way that I am right now. 
which by the way, if you guys haven't tried out Kettle and Fire before, they're offering my community 20% off their bone broth, their bone broth soups by using the code autumnbaits at checkout. Especially if you're really looking to up your collagen, your glycine intake, which is also just useful for preventing sugar cravings as well. You'll definitely wanna make sure that you can stock up to get 20% off. So make sure you check out the link down description below and use code autumnbaits at checkout for 20% off. More eggs for my cheekies. I like to add in a little bit of whole milk into my eggs, just makes it like lighter and more fluffy. Also adds just a little bit more calcium in, which I'm trying to make sure, especially right now, I'm getting enough of. And then to go along with my eggs for some fiber as well as some fat, I'm gonna be making some guacamole. Usually I add in jalapeno as well, but I don't have any. But since I'm using two avocados, this will last me for a couple days. I mean, that's like a pretty beautiful avocado. Not often that you get a beautiful avocado. For the seasonings, I like to add on crushed red pepper flakes. I've also got some ground garlic and then some cumin. I mean, so far that already looks pretty dang good. I like to leave mine a little bit more on the chunky side just because I think it gives it a little bit better texture. Okay, headed out for walk number two, but I wanted to first come out and say hi to the ladies. <laughs> yeah. Hey, latte. Can't grab the eggs just yet because looks like Coco Imposter, one of the chickens, is still in there laying and I don't want to like freak them out and open it up. So I'll grab eggs later, but now I'm just gonna take this little lady out for her long walk of the day. Okay, we just got back from the walk. 43 minute walk, 1.94 miles. Those are big lunch walk. It's also 282 feet elevation because we climbed this hill that's behind our house. So it's a good workout. Okay, so something else I've been having lately is just like some of my zero sugar chocolate protein powder. I use just a scoop, so I'm getting 10 grams of protein with some milk. So previously I love milk and I just didn't do as well with it. Ever since getting pregnant, I actually do perfectly fine with it. And when you mix milk with my zero sugar chocolate protein powder, it's like chocolate milk, it's so good. <laughs> Typically I would use my protein powder in a smoothie, which I would still do that for a first meal as well if I'm not having the pancake. On the days that I'm not having a smoothie, I then do just like this protein powder mix in between my lunch and my dinner. I don't wanna add like a full extra meal in, I just wanna make sure that I can top off my proteins. So I'm getting enough for my growing baby in my belly <laughs> and to help prevent pregnancy complications. And if I were to have a full meal right now, I'd be way too full for dinner. So this is just to give myself that protein without getting too full. So I just do like a cup, nothing too big. Oh, wow, it just always smells like hot chocolate powder. <laughs> mm. Oh, chocolate milk, I swear. So I'm just about to prep dinner and I'm actually going to be making like some jerk chicken wings. And then along with it, I'm going to be doing some roasted broccoli and then some Japanese sweet potato that I'm going to cut up probably into fries, but I haven't decided yet. So it's a pretty simple meal, but I'm getting the protein, I'm getting some high quality veg, and then I am getting some starch. So especially for all the walking I did today, for helping my muscle recovery, I'm getting that in as well. Okay, so for this wings recipe, I have a lot of spices, a lot of spices to give it a ton of flavor. I'm using some dried oregano, as well as some allspice, paprika, cayenne for a little bit of heat, some cinnamon, garlic, ginger, thyme, onion powder. You could just get like 
a jerk seasoning, but I just prefer to make them each whenever I go to use them. That way I don't have like a ton of different spice mixtures filling my drawers. I can just like bring out what I need and kind of tailor it to what I want. Especially before dinner, I found it's really nice to have diluted apple cider vinegar. Like I'm craving it before dinner because kind of like toward the evening with pregnancy, it's like my GI tract really starts to slow down. And so in order for me to actually be able to fit dinner in and eat enough to support my body, having the apple cider vinegar has kind of like helped to prime my body a bit. Definitely helped with nausea during first trimester. So this is something I usually sip on while I'm making my dinner, which is what I'm working on right now. So I'm using a seasoning similar to what I put together for the chicken on the broccoli and the potatoes kind of just to make this all like one cohesive meal, just tossing it together. And then I'm just gonna throw it in the oven for probably about 20 minutes, but I'll check on it to see how crispy it is and pull it out when it's done. Big thing is you just wanna make sure you spread it out. Otherwise it will steam, it won't crisp. Okay, so final product, we have the chicken wings, the like jerk chicken wings and the roasted broccoli and sweet potatoes, the Japanese sweet potatoes. I also made just like a quick garlic aioli using avocado oil-based mayo. And then just in case we feel like a little extra flavor, we have the unsweetened barbecue sauce for the wings as well. Sophie's thinking she's gonna get some, she is not. So we're gonna eat dinner, and then after that, I typically don't eat anything else, so I'm like fasting from 6.30 on. Mm, that's, that's so good. good. That's flavorful. Okay, I'm gonna try broccoli. Mm. Let's look at Sophie. Wait, your hand's blocking. <laughs> So thankfully I'm kind of back to my normal eating routine, but if you want to see what like my previous, like what I eat in a day looks like before pregnancy, you can check that out right here, here. I can't remember which one. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here, here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, cheers, and I'll see you in my next video.